Well, Ms. Patricia Lee just talked about time. So we're going to talk a little bit about time because it is important. And you know, there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about time. And it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which was planted, a time to kill, and there's also a time to get fired. Has anybody ever been fired? And did you know why you got fired? Well, in this case, we want to talk about getting fired. I sat in my office, no, my cubicle, for the longest time trying to decide how do I tell a person your work is no longer satisfactory. You aren't making the grade. You just don't have it anymore. I, I sat, sat in my, my office, office just thinking about, now, how did I get here? Looking back, I remember watching the good, the bad, and the ugly, the movie, or, or was it um, The Godfather? Anyway, when the credits roll, I saw the name director. And I said, I like that. I, that's what I want to do. I, I like telling people what to do on, on stage. But I never thought that I would co-found a theater company. You know, there's no nice way to tell a person because you have let it go on for too long. Just reminiscing, wow, I was teaching in an alternative school in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and really, that really put me on my journey, and I didn't realize it then. The alternative school was Camp Curtin YMCA, and it was the last stop for truant, belligerent 16-year-olds who couldn't read and could barely write, but they were creatives. I mean, we wrote a play about them, and my directing, which I wanted to be, was horrible. So the company representative that sponsored our school said, look, let me take you guys to New York so you can see what a real play is really like. So I said, oh, OK. And guess what that play was? Don't bother me, I can't cope. I said, oh my goodness, that's it. That is it. No turning back for me now. I'm going to New York. I had to do this. The school closed. I taught for two years in a regular school, but my heart was in New York. I had it on my mind, night and day. But in the back of my mind, I always thought about those kids. I couldn't just do this for myself, but I also had to do it for my students whose thoughts about school had changed since we had been to New York. They were actors and writers. And I also had a two-year-old daughter, and that brought me back to reality. How could I go after the it and still have my feet somewhere close to the ground for my daughter and those students? Late for meetings. No new ideas, no energy. But they have faked it, and everybody went along with it. Now, the business must move on. So I end up enrolling in American University in their master's program. The first class was taught by Lee Brewer and a group from New York called Mabu Minds. I hated New York. I hated DC. The one traffic in the daytime went this way, and then all the traffic at night went that way. There were eight women, or nine women, for every man in D.C. <laughs> and uh, there was very little black theater. But I did love the zoo and the museums and my cousin's house who lived in the southeast. No, but I needed to get back to it because it wasn't happening for me in D.C. Then one day while I'm talking to Lee Brewer about my dilemma, he said, you know what, we did this program just last year in Memphis, and there's this young black guy who's starting a, a theater company. Uh, you want him to call him? You want me to call him for you? But they were the founders. 
And maybe that was the problem. <laughs> Founder syndrome. <laughs> what the founders feel is the need to be involved in every decision. <laughs> so they become a roadblock to progress and limit the development of their team members. Wow, I got it. I got it. I mean, he had this deep southern draw that had me. I could tell he had it. So I moved to Memphis, which my dad thought was the craziest idea I had ever had since I told him I wanted to be an actress. New York was only 200 miles from our town. How could dad understand that he had it? I can remember when we would just have an idea. And we didn't even worry about the money, where the money was coming from, who was going to be in it, who would perform, when we would perform. We just did it. Oh, wow. I mean, Charlie Stop Arts Camp, and then we did an art show at Tri-State Bank, and uh, wow. Why is Founder Syndrome so dangerous for nonprofits? Founder Syndrome just keeps nonprofits from growing their mission in a sustainable and scalable way. They can't separate themselves from the very heart of it. And then one day, I went to work and realized that I hadn't received one phone call or email, and I couldn't think of anybody to call or why. But as I looked around the, our office in the basement of the convention center, I had no idea what to do next. I had lost it. Somewhere between the expensive productions to any idea about a summer program for you, I had lost it. What is it that drives the desire to go on without having all the answers. Not sure about the money, the performers, or the audience, but just knowing that it will happen. After 20 some years of marriage, theater, three children in tow, I realized that as I fell in my swivel chair, that I was like this young female custodian that had come into the office crying and upset and shouting, I can't stand this job. I know there's something better than this. What, what do, do you, you want, want to do? do? Questioning look, I don't know. I just know it's not this. For the last 20 years, that's all I've known, theater and performance. But I never wanted to be the one to write the check, pay the artist, and then schedule rehearsals, meet with the state, keep up with the great and audience surveys. I, I wanted, wanted to, to act! <laughs> <laughs> and now it was fading fast. Oh. <laughs> 